In this video, I will explain how to read uh, from a file uh, in Linux. So, in order to read from a file, you actually need uh, three six calls. So, the first six call is open the file, uh, then uh, actually read from the file, and finally close the file. So, in uh, C, for example, you'll have uh, open or F open, and you have uh, the file name and a couple of additional parameters. But uh, I wanted to make it uh, simple here, so I'm interested in reading from the file. So I've created a function OS file open read, which will open the file in read mode and allow us to read from the file. So this is actually quite uh, simple. I'm uh, uh, placing the value 2 in RUX. This corresponds to the open syscall. In RSI uh, I'm uh, setting this constant uh, which indicates to open read only. And uh, this constant is actually uh, 0. So you can simply set uh, zero. Uh, so you can do that with uh, an uh, XOR instruction, but I just wanted uh, to see it clear here. Uh, then in uh, RDX, I'm setting uh, zero again. Uh, this is used for uh, creation flags, but we don't want to create the file if it doesn't exist. So we don't need uh, any flags here. And finally, we perform the syscall. And remember, all Linux syscalls uh, will return the result in RUX. So, in this case, if the call succeeds, in RUX we'll have the file descriptor. Uh, otherwise, uh, in RUX there would be an error. Uh, also, in uh, RDI, uh, it expects the file name. So, this is already set uh, when the uh, procedure was called, so we don't need to set anything else here. So after calling this in RUX, uh, we hopefully have the file descriptor. Now, in order to actually read from an open file, I have a second procedure here, again very easy. Um, it uh, uses the read syscall. So, uh, this syscall is number zero, so I'm setting RUX here to zero, perform the syscall. And uh, we need in RDI to have the file descriptor. So remember from the previous function, the file descriptor was returned into RUX, so we need to set this in RDI. We also need a buffer in RSI and the size of the buffer in RDX. So uh, this is uh, the amount that uh, will be read uh, at maximum from the file. And uh, in RUX, uh, it will return uh, the size that was actually uh, read. And this can be zero at the end of the file, uh, or it can be uh, the actual requested size in RDX, or it can be uh, any number in between. And especially when approaching the end of file, it's possible that uh, the actual amount that was read is uh, significantly smaller than the requested amount in RDX. Uh, and it's also possible to receive an error in uh, RUCs. In this case, it will be a negative number. And finally, uh, the third syscall is the close syscall, which closes an uh, open file. And we need uh, in RDI the file descriptor. This again corresponds to what the syscall expects, so nothing in particular to be done here. Uh, and uh, in RUX we set 3, which is the close syscall. We perform the syscall. And following this in RUX we'll have either 0 on success or minus 1 on error. And that's it. I've defined here additional uh, constants uh, that can be used when uh, opening the file, but uh, I have not used them uh, for this demonstration.
So now let's take a look at the test file. So what's happening here? Uh, I have defined a file name here, which is called test underscore read.txt. Uh, this uh, must end with a zero because uh, the syscall uh, does not specify a parameter for the file size, so it will check to be a zero terminated string. So it's very important to have this. I also have here a buffer, uh, which is uh, uh, 4K in size, uh, initially filled with zeros. Uh, I also have uh, the buffer size here. I also have some messages here, because we need to check after each syscall if uh, we open the file OK. If not, we'll display this error opening file. Uh, error reading from file, error closing file, and that's it. So now let's see how uh, this works. So um, I'm uh, setting in RDI the file name. I'm calling uh, OS file open read. Remember the file descriptor will be returned into RAX, uh, but first I'm displaying the content. Uh, unfortunately, I have uh, already discussed the function for displaying a 32-bit uh, number. So I'm only displaying EAX, I'm not displaying the entire racks, but uh, this should be enough to see what's in there. Uh, and I'm testing to see if uh, racks is uh, negative, and if it is negative, uh, this is a clear indication of an error, so I'm uh, going to error open. Uh, let's see what uh, uh, this does. So, uh, in the case of error open, and we have here other errors. Uh, in, the case, in the case of error open, uh, we are simply displaying the corresponding message and jumping to done. And this happens for all the other errors. Of course, for the last one, we don't need the jump because uh, we already have done. We simply call uh, OS exit and we exit uh, the program. So, uh, also let's take a look at display EAX. Um, so, uh, I'm uh, first converting uh, the value in EAX into a buffer by calling win32 to string. I've uh, already created a video about this function. I'm going to leave a link in the description. Also about this OS exit. So. I will leave a link in the description. Uh, and uh, I'm displaying it uh, first as, an, uh, uh, as a decimal uh, value and then also as a hexadecimal uh, value. And that's it. Then there's a return here. So uh, now let's take a look. So following the open, uh, if we didn't uh, got an error, uh, then I'm... Um, calling OS file read. Uh, for this I'm setting RDI to the file descriptor. Remember it was returned into racks. I'm setting RSI to the file buffer, RDX to the file buffer size. I'm calling uh, file read. Again I'm displaying uh, the contents of uh, EAX. So in uh, racks there should be the size that was uh, read which should be at maximum uh, 4K, uh, and at the end of the file this should be zero. Uh, I'm also checking if there was an error. If there was an error, uh, then I'm calling this error read, which will display the message. I'm also uh, calling console write to display the contents of uh, the buffer. So uh, I'm setting in uh, RDX the length. Uh, and RSI is already set to the file buffer. Uh, then uh, I'm calling again uh, file read. I'm displaying again. Uh, and finally, uh, I'm calling uh, file close. And it's usually displaying the contents of EAX and uh, jumping to an error message if there was an error. And if not, I'm jumping to done and that's it. So. Uh, basically, we have a file open, two file reads, and one file close. So let's take a look. I uh, also have the usual uh, build script, which assembles everything and links them together. 
so now let's take a look at what, what's happening. Uh, again, let's check uh, the file name uh, test re underscore read.txt. As you can see, uh, this is not available here. So let's see what's happening. So there's an error opening the file. Okay, and uh, we got uh, this uh, value here uh, returned from open file. So now uh, let's try to create. So test read.txt. Okay, so we can see it here. It has zero size. So let's run this again. And this time uh, from the open call, we got this number three. So this is the file handle associated with test read. Uh, then from the first read, uh, we got size zero. From the second read, we got size zero. From the close uh, call, we got zero. So everything worked okay. And uh, from the two calls, we read uh, zero bytes each time. Now let's try to write something in this text file. So for example, let's say this is a test. I'm also pressing, I'm also pressing a new line here. Okay, so it has 15 bytes as you can see uh, here. So let's run this again. So again, from the open call, we got the number three, which is the file handle associated with the text file. From the read, the first read, uh, we got uh, the size 15, which represent the 15 bytes that were actually read. Uh, we also see uh, the text here, the content of the file, which was read in the file buffer. And then uh, from the second read call, uh, we got zero here. So if you want to read the file in a loop, you need to check for this condition. And finally, uh, from the close uh, operation, we got zero. So everything worked as expected. So I hope you enjoyed this and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time. Bye.